Please come to order. The few town meeting members still coming in. We'll wait a few seconds for them to get their clickers. Then we'll start. You can see the Arlington Minutemen are here. Thank you very much for coming in. We'll just be one second. Okay then. <laughs> okay. Mm. If the town meeting members coming in could keep moving right along to the right to get your clickers. And they all got to show up at 8 o'clock from now on. Try and get here early. should have put up enough seats. Well, we're waiting for the last few town meeting members to come in. You'll all find on your seats various motions and articles that are being submitted tonight. All right, let's clear the center aisle. There's only a couple people left checking in. Let's make room for the minute, men. Please sit down in the center aisle. That's you. Brown coat, curly hair. Sit down. Minute men coming. Ms. Goldstein, can you move out of the center aisle? They're coming. The minute men are going to march down and knock you over. You've got to sit down. Okay, it's clear the center aisle, please. Here come the Arlington <laughs> Minute Men. We're not a mean minute men. We're going to. So go. Go. Are you ready? You are. 
Star Spangled Banner. So I'll rise and face the flag, Star Spangled Banner. Giving our invocation this evening is the Reverend James Savage, pastor of St. Eulalie's Parish. Reverend, oh, up with the mics up front. Sorry, up front there. Let us pray. An elected representation of Arlington has been gathered. The gavel has been dropped and the meeting called to order. May the deliberations of this assembly serve to the common good of this town and may it reflect the wisdom and the heart of the divine and almighty judge and jury of us all. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend. Good evening. Welcome to the 2015 Annual Town Meetings. This is Arlington's 208th, our first being held in 1807. It's our 76th as a representative town meeting, the first being held in 1937. We're following quite a lot of tradition here. For procedural guidance, we use the town bylaws and town meeting time. As I mentioned in my letter, you can get a copy of town meeting time. Come up and see me at the break. I'll tell you how to order one. Please remember we abide by the 48-hour rule. All substitute motions and substantial amendments must be submitted in writing by placing a signed copy on each member's chair and by providing the original two copies to the moderator no later than the commencement of the session before the article is expected. Um, I also appreciate it if we get them by email earlier. Tonight you'll notice there are five amendments to Article 11. I only saw two of them previ previous to this evening. It makes it hard for me and it makes it hard for town council to determine if those are actually um, 
within the scope, with, within the proper form for our bylaws. And just for organization, for myself, I now have to figure out on the fly how to register and, and vote on, 11, on five, different article, five different amendments. It gets a little disjointed, so please get them to me beforehand. It's just a little un unfair to spring them on me, myself in the meeting at the last minute like tonight. I know you, this is the one exception, but you are on your computer typing them up. You could have emailed it to me. My email's everywhere. Um, out of consideration to your fellow members and to allow full debate, please keep your remarks brief and concise so that all members have a fair opportunity to speak. And I once again use Mr. Doherty, the former Andover moderator for many years, who said, we have, don't, I don't have a formal limit, but I did tell the meeting, three minutes is enough. After five, you're going to put them to sleep. After seven, they're going to vote against you. Our speaking time is seven minutes. So if you're going to go to whole seven, they're going to vote against you. <laughs> speaking of time limits, as a result of an informal poll last year, revealed that we want to limit the time spent under announcements and resolutions at the start of the meeting. Therefore, the moderator has the power to regulate the uh, meeting. I'm going to use that, and I'm going to limit all announcements and resolutions that do not have a substantive vote or do not come under a warrant article to four minutes. That's why you see four minutes here. So anything under Article 3, introduction of reports and committees, general announcements, four minutes. And please, don't feel you have to use the whole thing either. Um, we have a new email distribution list. You'll find on your chairs a sheet that looks like this. That's telling you how to sign up for the new list. It's an automated list. You go and you sign up once and you get a little email. And we're going to shut the old list down because that's not a town regulated list and we don't have any control over the maintaining it for public record so we want to shut that list down and it's going to be shut down so take that piece of paper if you haven't um, last I checked we had about 190 to 100 people had signed up so for those other folks on the other list if you want anything you got to migrate um, I appreciate the level of civility we've been able to maintain in the last few years. Let's try and keep it up. Now, two thirds of us are used to electronic voting. Mr. Good? For the other, two th other one third, we have our clickers again. We're now officially with the clickers. They're going to stay. We gave the town money last year to do it. We have at least three, maybe four years worth of money. So you've all been issued an individually coded handset. You may use no other handset and don't let anybody use yours. The only keys that we are going to be using on these handsets, like last year, are number one, number two, and number three, right across the top board. Number one, yes, two, no, three, abstain. When we count the votes, we only count the yes, no votes. Those are all that go towards the tally. The, no, the abstentions do not get counted. There is a power button on there. Do not turn it off, ever. It gets, put, it gets given to you, turned on. The batteries last for 200 hours or something crazy. If you turn it off, it takes a while to recycle and to talk to the computer again. You could miss a vote. And if you've turned it off and you miss a vote, too bad. Um, you're you're going to get logged out for that vote. There's nothing we can do about it. I'm not entertaining questions during this. Um, don't give your clicker to anyone else to vote. If you see someone with two or more handsets, let me know right away, proxy voting is not allowed. Um, you have to be here, you have to vote. When you leave the room, we have buckets, throw them in the buckets. At, don't take them home. They cost us 75 bucks if you lose it. Um, we didn't lose any last year. Two people brought them home during the meeting, we tracked them down and got them the next day. We, we, they're coded, we know who has which number. We know who, if you brought it home. Um, the way it's gonna work is, We'll have our debate. I'll announce we are ready to vote. I'll ask the voting administrator, um, the OTI guys, Mr. Renault, if he's ready to vote. He'll give me the single signal that he's ready. And the, we're not going to use this clock. Last year I had issues with this. 
on the 22nd, they have their own clock. When I tell them they're ready to vote and I say vote, a clock will splash up here. We have our 20 seconds. That triggers the computer to start and stop voting. Only vote during the window. One of the issues we found last year was people were voting too soon or too late. So once the clock shows up, then you can start voting. Um, again, use one, two, and three. We're going to take a test vote every evening to make sure our clickers work, which Mr. <laughs> I forgot your name already. <laughs> Mr. Renault, are we ready? Yes, so if you want to take a test vote now, just randomly press one, two, or three. So go ahead and, oh, where's our clock, Mr. Renault? Dun, dun, dun. So he's not ready. I haven't got, been given the signal. So go ahead and vote. So you will get, it's a round trip. It goes from your clicker to the base station, back to your clicker, you'll get yes vote received, no vote received. During the 20 seconds, you can change your vote all you want, but it's the last vote that is received is registered. So, did it work? We had 133 yeses, it passed. 35 noes. <laughs> so can we run through the screen, the um, tallies? When we have close votes, or if you doubt the vote and you want to see, five people can arise, 30 people can arise, and you'll see this, as last year. They're by precinct, and you'll see your name, Make sure you got the same vote up there. It should. They tell me a computer is flawless, but I don't know about it. Uh, I guess. So we will splash this, but not all the time. Only when close votes and when someone asks to see the votes. This will appear on the website the next day. I, this year I intend to use the clicker on almost all votes. Last year I didn't use it on all votes, I think because I was getting used to it as well as the meeting. But I intend to use it almost on every single vote this year except for you no know, action votes and the procedural votes at the end that just should whiz right through. Um, if anyone wants to use the clicker and I haven't, five arise, we'll use them. If you have any questions about the clickers, ask any of the kids at the back, ask Eric Helmuth, who's over there waving at you. We're not allowed to talk to um, Mr. Monroe or his, Kyle, his associate. Eric's our interface with them. So that's it for me. Um, if anyone has any questions afterwards, see me at the break. I'll explain what I said. Now, um, annual reports are at the back hall. Uh, if everyone is a, take one of those, please. They came out early again this year. Thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine, for making that happen. And we have the tennis club selling us cookies at the break. So, now, do we have any new town meeting members who have yet to be sworn in? Brand new town meeting members just elected. Please rise. Nope, just the new, new people. These are the people that have decided to put themselves through this. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, insert your name there, will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters before the town meeting. And vote in the best interest of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in the civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws Town Manager Act, and the general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. And thank you.
Let's have all the regular old town meeting members who have just been re-elected, let's swear them in. There should be a lot of them. Oh, Mr. Coro. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, I will participate fully and will fairly evaluate all matters before town meeting and vote in the best interest of the town. I support free speech and will treat others with mutual respect and will conduct myself in a civil manner that is becoming of an elected town meeting member. I do solemnly swear that I'll faithfully and impartially perform the duties incumbent upon me as a town meeting member of the town of Arlington in accordance with the bylaws of the Town Manager Act and general laws of the Commonwealth, so help me God. Thank you very much. I recognize Board of Chairmen, Mr. Greeley, Board of Selectmen Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is requested that members of the Board of Selectmen, elected officials of the town, town manager, department heads, staff, superintendent of schools and staff, committees, commissions, boards of the town, Minuteman Regional Vocational Technical School District Committee and Superintendent, members of the Electronic Voting Committee and staff, members of the General Court representing Arlington, and also any consultants who have been retained to work for the town relative to articles to be acted upon by this meeting and representatives of the news media be permitted to sit within the town meeting in closure. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's so moved. Um, constables return. Madam Clerk, do you have reason to believe that this meeting was appropriately called by this Board of Selectmen and that the constable made a return of service on the warrant in accordance with the laws. She signifies yes. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. It is moved that if all the business of the meeting as set forth in the warrant for the annual town meeting is not disposed of at this session, when the meeting adjourns, it adjourns to Wednesday, April 29, 2015 at 8 p.m. All in favor? So move. If we don't finish tonight, we're coming back Wednesday. One more thing. Put them on vibrate, please, or turn them off. I don't want to hear phones ringing and they bother our neighbors. Thank you. Mr. Greeley, Article 2 is now on the table. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Since this is an article, the moderator has been kind enough to allow me seven minutes to discuss the state of the town. Since I've done eight, eight others of these, I'm sure you wish you had enforced the four minutes. <laughs> But if you've heard me talk about Arlington before, you know that I'm one who believes greatly in this town, and especially because of the people of the town. And I believe because we truly are a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, that has made all the difference here in this community. I didn't come up with that, by the way. For us, government of the people and by the people started really pre-colonial days when Europeans came over and for religious freedom, the, the churches became the center of our community. And as that happened, certain civic matters started to uh, happen, as well as religious matters. And so, after church services, they started to hold informal town meetings, and they would select an individual who would then go out and, and investigate that particular matter and come back and report the next week. And thus, we have the starts of town meeting and the board of selectmen. Certainly during the Revolutionary War, we were of the people as we banded together and Minotomy did more than our fair share of uh, earning our independence from England. 1800s, certainly we saw many more people coming into Arlington as we moved from a farming community to much more of uh, industry and a residential community. Uh, in the 1900s, of course, we have the two world wars and, and again a huge increase in the population. A little while ago, I looked at the annual report from 1952, the first year that we changed the government by the people to become the town manager form of government, 
replicating that which was going on in businesses across the United States, where you would have a board of directors and then a chief executive officer, as we have the board of selectmen and we have the strong town manager, and we've got a very good one in Mr. Adam Chapdelaine. It also was the first year my father served on the Arlington Board of Selectmen. Uh, when it went from three members to five, he had been a member of the Board of Public uh, Works, which was subsumed by the Board of Selectmen. And in 1952, the population of Arlington was approximately 43,000 people. I'm sure most of you are aware that's approximately our population today. But in 1952, they were concerned about the population explosion, which was going to happen. And so they were trying to, to figure out how are we going to support 100,000 residents by the year 2000. And so that town meeting by the people and the Board of Selectmen dealt with zoning issues to try and increase apartment building in two and three family homes. <laughs> this year, uh, all of us today are going to look at 46 warrant articles. Not all of them today, but it wouldn't be bad if we were able to do that, right? And I find it an interesting dichotomy that we do have the lowest number of Warren articles. We also had the lowest turnout at this past election. Now, those of us in office believe it's because we're doing such a spectacular job. <laughs> People feel no need to change. But on the, same, on the same issue, we have 252 of you sitting out there who are willing to serve and who are willing to work and be a government for the people of the town of Arlington. You know, uh, we also have more than 100 boards and commissions throughout the town of Arlington. And all of them almost entirely are unpaid volunteer positions. That certainly, in my opinion, is a government of the people. So on those 46 articles, we're going to be dealing with things like budgets, which they dealt with back in pre-colonial days, as well as they'll be dealing with many years from today. We'll be looking at a master plan, which has taken an audit of where we are and maybe some of the things we need to do to keep going. We're going to be voting on a committee of the people when the um, people, the voters of Arlington, supported the Community Preservation Act putting together a committee there to help us preserve our history, our open space, our recreation, and our housing. In schools, uh, I'm no expert there, but it is by far the most important element that many of us will vote on. And understanding education is a journey for all Arlington residents, all of the people in this town, as they deal with the bulging populations and rehabbing of facilities like the Stratton School, like Arlington High School, like the Minuteman Regional Vocational School. We're also going to possibly look at some attempts at government restructuring. Uh, so many of the issues that we have dealt with in the past, we continue to deal with as we go forward as one people. So I'd like you to take a moment now, and I want you each to think about 50 years from today. What is going to be the greatest challenge facing that town meeting? So I want you to think about that for 10 seconds. 50 years from today, in the year 2065, I will not still be on the board of selectmen at that point in time. <laughs> yeah, some really might be. God, God help us, right? But take 10 seconds, 10 seconds. Think about, in your opinion, what will be the greatest challenge facing the people of Arlington in this town meeting 50 years from today. And now I want you to turn to your neighbors and share it. Talk to your neighbors, everybody. Go ahead. Tell them what you think it's going to be, and then hear what they think it's going to be. One minute. All right. You got one minute, Kevin. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. All right, quickly give me a couple of examples. Uh, Mr. Gilligan, what's going to be uh, the biggest problem 50 years from today? Water, sewer, and automobiles. Water, sewer, and automobiles. Jim? Water, electricity, and gas. Water, electricity, and gas. Are we underwater? Are we underwater? Boy, a lot of water things. Where is that? Is East Arlington underwater? All right, we could go on, but I know there'd be things like infrastructures, facilities, schools, education, and all the rest. And just as we have before, 
As long as we stay a government of, by, and for the people, as President Lincoln said, we most surely will not perish. We will continue to flourish. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I went over by seven seconds. Next up, Mr. Moderator, with your permission, announcements. Yes. Sir, okay. So we have some very special guests with us up in the balcony here today. As you know, for 30 years we have had a sister city relationship with Nagaoka Kyo in Japan. And for the last 11 years, so the student exchange, and for the last 11 years, we have exchanged students between the two cities. And we're now uh, host to 26 students from Nagaoka Kyo and their five adult chaperones. Give me a nice round of applause if you will. The students of Nagaoka Kyo. And through you, Mr. Moderator, with your permission to say a few words on behalf of Nagaoka Kyo, the head chaperone and an educational consultant from Nagaoka Kyo, please welcome Mr. Oki San. Mr. Oki. Good evening. <laughs> My name is Yoshimi Oki. And I'm a supervisor in Nagaoka Kyo and the head chaperone of this delegation. On behalf of Nagaoka Kyo City, thank you for your warm welcome. We are very happy to be here. Thank you again for hosting our students. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, it's that time of the meeting. Announcements and resolutions. Remember, four minutes or less. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12, and co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee. Um, David? You might have seen uh, this. Well, oh, something will pop up there soon. I just wanted to let you know that upstairs in, in the uh, hallway next to the Selectman's hearing room, there's a uh, photo photographic exhibit called Recycled Beauty by uh, one of the members of the, a very talented photographer and member of the recycling committee, Ellen Calloway. And while they search, um, that'll come up again. So that's up here only for members of the, of the, uh, the meeting and those at home that the show only goes till Friday. So that's why I wanted to make this announcement on the first night. There, there we go. That's what you, it's, it's a wonderful exhibit right upstairs. Enjoy. Thank you. Anyone else? Ma'am in the back. Oh, John, Mr. Marr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Marr, Precinct 14, Chairman of the Cable Advisory Committee. As required by law, the licensing authority, the Board of Selectmen, held an ascertainment hearing on April 15th upstairs in the Lions Hearing Room. Uh, the the, the uh, two inquiries uh, were whether or not the cable companies have adequately performed as we approach a renewal process of their licenses, which all expire next year. The other inquiry is what are the cable needs of the town moving forward. The public record remains open until noontime this coming Friday. Any written comments can be uh, filed with the Board of Selectmen. I'm glad to uh, respond to any questions uh, during the break that anybody has. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Burnell. Good evening. Uh, Andrew Bunnell, Chair of the Redevelopment Board here in Arlington. You've each been given a copy of the Arlington Master Plan this evening. If you decide at some point you're done with it or don't want it, uh, we'd appreciate it if you would use one of the bins by our table and at each of the corners of the, uh, the room so that we can reuse that rather than recycle it. Thank you. And uh, we'll also be 
giving you copies of the report of the Arlington Redevelopment Board this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff Boudreau, Precinct 21 and member of the Poet Laureate Selection Committee. Last year, I believe it was Article 11, approved the position uh, of a volunteer Poet Laureate for the town. The, I'd like to uh, report that the town, the uh, committee has been formed. We were finally formed in March or so. We have had two meetings and we are on schedule a timeline to advertise the, the position in May. Uh, review applications in June and make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen in July. Thank you. Mr. O'Connor. I move that the um, James O'Connor, Precinct 19, I move that the Town Meeting Procedures Committee report, you'll find in the absence of two staples, you have two different pages on Article 8 and 45. We'll address those during the meeting. Thank you. That report is received. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I move that the Board of Selectmen's report be received. All in favor, that report is received. Mr. Foskett. Charles Foskett, uh, Precinct 8. Um, Mr. Moderator, I move that the report of the Capital Planning Committee be received. And um, <clears throat> I'd like to notify the meeting that on Wednesday night, I'm going to ask that the uh, Capital Planning article be taken out of order if it suits the meeting uh, due to a uh, personal conflict that I have. Okay. That report is received. And the other, oh, right here. Yep, you. Good evening. I'm Sherry Barron, Precinct 7, and a member of the Arlington Human Rights Commission for 21 years since its inception, since it was formed in this room. In the interest of time, and I think much to the joy of Mr. Leone, I'm not going to deliver our report. You can find it in the annual report on page 61. But since there are two articles relating to the Human Rights Commission tonight, we thought we'd give you a look at some of the things that we've accomplished. Can you hear me? Better? Oh. Since there are two articles relating to the Human Rights Commission tonight on the warrant, we thought we would give you a look at what we've accomplished during the past six years, which is a little less than a third of our existence. And there's a pile of pink papers in the back, with, which is an information sheet. We invite you to take one as you leave. If we run out or if you forget, we'll have them here on Wednesday. We have two additional commissioners who also serve as town meeting members, Christine Carney, just give a wave, and um, Bill Logan, who's unable to be here tonight. We also have three former commissioners um, the Selectman Curo, didn't hear me, um, Christine Deschler, and um, Douglas Davidoff. Oh, and Patricia Warden, excuse me. My memory, sorry. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the entire commission to thank the town for their continuing support. We've always enjoyed positive collaborative relationships with the Board of Selectmen, the town manager, the school department, and most especially, God bless you, the Arlington Police Department under the direction of Chief Ryan. We meet on the third Wednesday of every month at the Jefferson Cutter House in the lower level, except during months when town meeting is in session, and then we meet on Thursdays, the third Thursday. Meetings begin at 8, and they're open to the public, and we invite you to attend if you want to observe or if you have something to bring to the commission. We are extremely proud of the work that we do. We take the mission that is entrusted to us very seriously. 
and we are honored to be able to serve this town. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. Leonard, did you have a report or announcement? Thank you, Mr. Moderator, John Leonard, Precinct 17. Mr. Moderator, this is about the fifth time that I have approached town meeting and asked why is the maintenance study committee still on the reports of committee when the maintenance study committee has not had a meeting in 13 years? You yourself, Mr. Moderator, dissolved this along with other committees two years ago at the end of town meeting, and for some reason we just can't get rid of this committee. <laughs> and it is not on the, the Arlington website either. I would like to make a suggestion that somehow... Where, where, did you, where is it? The maintenance study committee, I was a member of it back in when it was formed in May of 2000, and this is the fifth year I'm trying to get it obliterated. <laughs> I'll make a motion to dissolve it again. Maybe it'll go away. It did, it did not go away, Mr. Moderator. Let's try again. All right, could, so. Could I make a motion to just put this under the rug and not lift the rug up anymore, Mr. Moderator? I, I'm going to. If, I'm going to take that as a motion to dissolve the maintenance study committee. Do I have a second? I have a second. All in favor, please say yes. 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 It is dissolved and gone. <laughs> Ms. Kropelka, can you make sure that committee disappears from our books forever? My second question, Mr. Moderator, if I may, if Article 11 is passed with the... We'll talk about 11 when we get there. Well, it involves committees, Mr. Moderator. That's why I'm bringing it up. It involves a, a, activating a committee. Will that then dissolve the Community Preservation Act Study Committee, which is in the reports of committees? That committee will dissolve when I'm about to dissolve a bunch of committees. What I'm getting at is the committee that will be formed under Article 11 will take the place, I would imagine, of the committee that is named in the reports of committees talking as a study committee that was formed in 2001. I have a list, Mr. Leonard, of a bunch of committees we're going to dissolve before this meeting ends. I just can't put my fingers on it right now. Okay. But that okay. is one of the ones we will dissolve. Okay. And lastly, I won't bother you anymore, Mr. Moderator, on this, article, this, this subject. Is there any possibility that any committee will be discussing what has been going on in East Arlington? My John, this is way beyond announcements and resolutions, and I don't know what you mean by what's going on in East Arlington. I don't see anything in reports of committees on traffic advisory, and I was just curious, as a member of the town of Arlington, how do I go about, outside of asking people questions, what improvements are being made in the East Arlington situation in regards to accidents and fatalities? Yes, Mr. Chaplain, that under Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Sir. Any other reports or committees or announcements? Sir. Oh, wait. Rolly, wait. Alan's going next. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Mr. Tosti. Fellow town meeting members, I move that the report of the Arlington Finance Committee be received. Second. So received. Um, I'd like to give the report of the uh, Arlington Finance Committee now, and to do that, I'd request 10 minutes. I don't think I'll use it, but I'd like that permission to have that. Okay, that's the prerogative of the meetings. Mr. Tosti, you have 10 minutes. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? Yeah. Mr. Tosti, you have 10 minutes. I'll get you guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Um, I'm very pleased this year for the first time uh, since I've been on the Finance Committee, uh, that we actually were able to get you the reports 
uh, together with the selectmen and the redevelopment report and actually got mailed out over a week ahead of time. Uh, the stars were in alignment. Uh, Marie Kapelko held up the postman until we can get it done. So I can't guarantee we'll do it in the future every time, but we're going to try. I'd like to go through a few pages on the Finance Committee if you have the report right here. By the way, you'll notice that the Selectmen and the Finance Committee coordinate a lot of things. Unfortunately, we didn't coordinate, so they're both blue. Ours is a different shade of blue, so. Um, okay, uh, page four is the report of the uh, Chair of the Finance Committee. I think you can read through that yourself. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. I think it gives a reasonable summary of the various issues that we have. On page 18, on page 18, just a correction, on article 29, uh, it lists a whole bunch of committees and commissions which we appropriated money for. And under H, Vision 2020, $3,000. There is in parentheses a nine to eight vote. That is incorrect. It was a unanimous vote. It got carried over from a prior year. So again, on Article 29, that was a unanimous vote for Vision 2020 appropriation. We can make that change administratively. Thank you. So just cross out the eight and nine in your books. Thank you. Okay. On uh, B1, the moderator asked that we, ex we make the budgets bigger. So uh, my vice chair who was working on this uh, bumped them up a couple. We probably added another page, but hopefully this is a little bit more readable for you. It is. I can actually see it. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Now, um, on C1, C1, this is the summary, basically the financial summary for the whole budgets, appropriations, everything. And you'll see that on the first column is all your revenues broken out by property, school, uh, reimbursements, local receipts, and, and local aid. The middle is all the appropriations, the budgets are up top and then all of the individual Warren articles, uh, the enterprise funds, and then a summary of all the revenues and a summary of all the expenditures. Um, so that gives you a good summary of, of what we're looking at. What I'd like to spend a few minutes, though, is on the next pa uh, page, which is D1. And the deputy town manager made a, a good try to fit it all in so this is also readable. This is a little smaller, but it's a lot of years and a lot of data. This is our long-term plan. This has worked on for many months uh, on the Long Range Planning Committee um, and is really the heart and soul of our financial plan. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see that the revenues are on top and then projected out, uh, and then the appropriations in the middle section and then the reserve fund balances, and then a couple footnotes down below. Um, we've, we made some changes this year, and I, I'd like to go through them. If you look at last year's report, and you don't have to take it out now, but if you compare it to last year's report, uh, last year we had a small deficit in fiscal 2000, uh, 2019, and then we had a $12.8 million deficit in fiscal 2020. Uh, it, was pointed, it was pointed out by a couple people, this cannot continue. We, we've got to bring these deficits down. We've got to bring them to at least within a, a, a reasonable shot of uh, being able to um, take care of them, pass an override, cut the budgets, whatever we're going to do. So the Long Range Planning Committee uh, started its work uh, with, with the uh, able guidance of the uh, town manager, uh, and we made a lot of changes. Uh, to rein in or postpone this deficit. Uh, the first one is we allowed for slightly higher growth on our local receipts. And instead of going up at 50,000, it's a small change, but you know, we, we allowed it to go up at 75,000. We looked back at the, what it had been doing, and this was more reasonable, so we made that change. Uh, we revisited free cash. We had been using a set amount of a million five. Uh, so we went back and did a 10-year average of free cash. 
uh, and we put that in. So it's a little bit higher, but it's, it's uh, uh, probably also more accurate. And then with our health insurance, uh, we have been carrying 7% right along. We went back. We looked at a 10-year average of the health insurance increases in the GIC, which is the Group Insurance Commission for the state, which we now are part of. And so we modified it to go along with what that averages will be. Um, now, this was two things. It closed the deficit a little bit, but it also made it less conservative. So now, you know, a little bit more vulnerable if there's a recession, uh, if, if things start coming back down, uh, motor vehicle excise, state aid, things like that. So there's always a, a balance in these things. But we needed to reduce growth, especially we needed to reduce our spending growth. So we started to look at this. Uh, the town manager, the first part, met along with representatives from the Finance Committee, met with the Arlington Retirement Board, um, and they uh, agreed to decrease their usual 6% increase down to 5.5%. Uh, now, the Re Arlington Retirement Board has a responsibility under state law to have our, our pension system fully funded, I think it's by 2040. And uh, so we're very thankful that they were cooperative and, and uh, uh, agreed to reduce it up through fisc uh, fiscal 2019, I believe. The town manager uh, uh, reduced his own budgets. And you'll see that, the net, uh, net town budgets. Uh, so he reduced his own budget to three and a quarter percent for fiscal 16. And then from uh, fiscal 17 on, he reduced it down to 3%. The schools have been stayed the same for 3.5% for next fiscal year, went to 3 and a quarter, and down to 3% from then on. Now, in that line, keep in mind that the schools are still being allowed to grow their 10-year average of 7% on their special education and still have a provision where additional money is allowed for increased school enrollment. Um, so you'll see that the school budgets uh, are going up 5.61%, so over 5% all the way through. Um, now, all of these steps have eliminated the deficits in fiscal 19 and eliminated the deficit in fiscal 20 and reduced the magnitude in fiscal 21. Um, and I think this has been a big change, and we ask for your support on these budgets, therefore. But we still have a lot of challenges ahead of us. Um, we still have Arlington High School that needs to be renovated. We still have Minuteman, which needs a renovation there. Um, so we've still got many challenges and we're asking you support going forward. At this point, there's a lot of information here and I, I you only spent a few minutes to go through it. We're available for questions and all of our finance committee members here and there's several that couldn't be here tonight, but I'd like to introduce them if they could just stand briefly. Uh, from precinct, representing precinct 21, John Deist, for here. Hey, precinct, wait until the end. <laughs> Even though John likes it, but you know. Uh, <laughs> precinct two is Stephen DeCourcy, there. Precinct three, Al Tosti, myself. Precinct five, Mary Margaret Franklamont, in the back. Uh, precinct six, Carolyn White, also in the back there. Uh, precinct 7, Jonathan Wallach, I don't think could stay. Precinct 8, at the head table, Charlie Foskett. Precinct 9, Brian Beck, right here. Uh, precinct 10, Peter Howard, over here on the right, or my right. Uh, precinct 11, Tom Cacavera, okay, in the back. Precinct 12, Ken Simmons, okay, also on the back. Precinct 13, Paul Bear, right here. Precinct 14, at the head table, Alan Jones, and Precinct 15, Richard Fanning. Precinct 16, Bill Keller, wasn't able to make it today. Uh, Precinct 17, Grant Gibeon. Precinct 18, Robert Devate. Okay, in the back here. Precinct 19, Christine Deschler. Okay, uh, Precinct 20, Dean Carmen. And Precinct 21, Dave McKenna. Okay, I'd like to thank all of them for their uh, tremendous amount of work they've done, and please don't hesitate to ask them questions going forward. Thank you.
We thank the Finance Committee. It's one of the hardest commi working committees we have. Let's start meeting in January. Any other reports or announcements? Mr. Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Rolly Chabot, Precinct 12, and a member of the Electronic Voting Study Committee. Just a couple quick reminders. You all have a clicker now, or a handset. Keep it on. Use it as you direct it. Next, on Wednesday night, when you come into the meeting and pick up your handset, just give us the number. We can pull it, pull it much faster that way. We no, have to look it up. excuse me. Um, they might, the numbers might change because we have three openings and when those no. new people get slotted in, the numbers are going to get bumped. So continue with the names. Yeah, but the rule isn't going to really change. I mean, if three change out of 250 or this, it's just going to save some time. No, okay? everybody's going to get changed. Secondly, uh, if the, uh, for, the new, for the new town meeting members, new people, brand, brandy new, at the end of the session, when we close the meeting for the night, there will be some blue buckets by the doors. Put your handset in the buckets. It just makes it more convenient for us to pick them up and bring them all back and, and re-slot them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Any other announcements or resolutions or reports of committees? Seeing none. Um, what? Someone had one? No, good. All right, so that takes Article 3 off the table. Mr. Greeley, um, you're up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. My job now to introduce the individuals um, that are sitting up here in front of the hall up on the stage. You know, of course, our moderator, Mr. Leone. Next to him, we have Stephanie Lucarelli, our town clerk. Next to Stephanie, we have Mr. Gabe Weiss, who is the official stenographer for a town meeting, the poor soul. Can imagine having to track everything that we talk about here. Immediately to my left, the mayor of the town of Arlington, Marie Kripelka, actual title administrator. And I, I would ask you now to hold your applause. I know she deserves it, though. But next to Marie, we have our town council, who is the proud father of daughter Piper since last town meeting, Mr. Doug Heim. If you would save your applause, please, until the end. As I get to the end of this table, all of my department heads are going to come up here and introduce themselves to you. But first, the, the proud father since last town meeting of daughter Pearl, our excellent town meeting, meeting a town manager, Adam Chapterlane. Don't clap. <laughs> Andrew Flanagan, no. <laughs> Our deputy town manager, Andrew Flanagan. Wait, wait. The youngest no new person children, ever Flanagan? elected to the Arlington Board of Selectmen, just former chairman, Mr. Stephen Byrne, the member of the Board of Selectmen who has set the record for attending the most events in his first term in office, Mr. Joe Curo. Another former chairman down the end, we have Mr. Dan Dunn. And the second longest serving member of the Arlington Board of Selectmen, Diane Mahan. Now. And here are your department heads. Hi, Patty Brennan Sawtell, representing Health and Human Services tonight. I'm Paul Tierney, Director of Assessments. Jim Feeney, also representing Health and Human Services tonight. Andrea Nicolai, representing Arlington's Libraries, Acting Director. Michael Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Michael Byrne, Director of Inspectional Services. Uh, David Good, Chief Technology Officer. Ed Marlinga, Workers' Compensation Agent, Benefits Attorney. Bob Jefferson, Fire Chief. 
And back there, stand up, if you would, please, Mr. Stephen Gilligan, Treasurer for the Town of Arlington. Oh, oh, to me, uh, we have, I'll do it, Chief Fred Ryan, the Chief of the Police Department. And Karen Malloy, Director of, of Human Services. Who haven't I introduced in this, in this? Carol Kowalski, our Director of Planning. I know, but the Redevelopment Board was going to get up themselves. That's why I didn't. So anyhow, our Director of Planning and Development, Carol Kowalski. All right, who else? Huh? What? Table, oh. No, that's Mr. Tosti's job. Oh, sorry, not my job. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19 now. No other reports or motions to be received. Mr. Tosti. Um, in my rush to uh, finish, I forgot to introduce Gloria Turco, our executive secretary. I move that the recommended votes contained in the respective reports of the Finance Committee, Board of Selectmen, Redevelopment Board, and other committees be before the meeting without further motion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. I move that Article 3 be laid upon the table. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. So declared Article 3 is on the table. That brings us to Article 4. Nine o'clock. Um, appointment of Miss Measure of Wood and Bark. I, we have any uh, nominations from the floor? Seeing none, I direct the clerk to enter one vote for Miss Elsie Fiore as our Measure of Wood and Bark. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Miss Fiore, you are once again our Measure of Wood and Bark. Would you like to say anything? That closes Article 5. That brings us to Article 6. Oh, it's Article 5. That closes Article 4. We now have Article 6. We're taking nominations for the Assistant Town Meeting Moderator. Mr. Kay Sayer. Assistant Town Moderator. Mike Kerr, Precinct 12. I nominate uh, for Assistant Town Moderator, uh, Jim O'Connor of uh, Precinct 19 to continue his work. Okay, we have Mr. O'Connor. Any other nominations for Assistant Town Moderator? Seeing none, I direct the clerk to enter one vote for Mr. O'Connor. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? Mr. O'Connor, congratulations. You now have the unenviable job. Article 5 closed. That brings us to Article 6. We have before us the recommended vote of the Redevelopment Board for no action. Mr. Rudiman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Rudiman, Precinct 9. I wish to offer a substitute motion under Article 6. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I wish to bring to the podium to resident of the town, Mr. Christopher Loretti, who can speak in, in uh, detail and clarity about this substitute motion. As a town resident, Mr. Loretti is able to speak. Six uh, minutes and 41 seconds. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Chris Loretti, Precinct 7, and thank you, Mr. Ruderman, for introducing me. This substitute motion on Article 6 aims to improve the process by which zoning compliance is assessed for projects or of developments requiring special permits. All right, I'm move over here so I have the clock. To, um, to understand how this amendment fits with current practices in the zoning bylaw, um, Mr. Good has put up on the screen a few excerpts from the bylaw itself. And I don't want to confuse anyone with Article 10 that's up there. That is the, art, the section of the zoning bylaw. We're talking about Article 6 here for a town meeting. But what this article does is it lays out how the bylaw is to be administered and enforced. And section 10.01 simply says, it's the building inspector who's responsible for enforcing the zoning bylaw. 
Section 10.02 says if you, if you want to build something, you need a building permit, and you don't get a building permit unless your, uh, the project that you're building complies with zoning. It also says that if it doesn't comply with zoning, then the, direct, the building inspector has to give you a written notification why. Now those are, is, are largely, um, what, what, these apply for all projects requiring building permits, but there's also a special category of permits called special permits, and that's what this zoning bylaw change applies to. There are two special permit granting authorities within the town. The one that gives the most permits, roughly 10 to 20 per year, is the Zoning Board of Appeals. There's, the Redevelopment Board also grants special permits, and they do it under a process called environmental design review. The um, projects have to meet all of the same criteria as the ZBAs, but then there are an additional dozen or so other criteria it must meet as well. But what I want to call your attention to is the um, different responsibilities that are involved here. It's the responsibility of the zoning enforcement officer, that is the building inspector to in enforce the zoning bylaw. It's the responsibility of the ARB or the ZBA to enforce the special permit criteria described within the zoning bylaw. But, and no others. That's what that, those last two words mean in this section 10.0 10.11. So there's very um, clear and distinct lines of authority going on here. If we go to the next page, what I'm showing you here is part of the permit application form used by the ZBA. This is something they've adopted fairly recently. And the way the, the process works is the applicant fills out these forms, and there's some additional pages at the front, and then they're reviewed by the Inspectional Services Department. If we go to the next page, at the bottom, the uh, text I've highlighted in red shows that the application is reviewed by the Inspectional Services Department, and it's signed off by someone in that department. As I said, this is a relatively new process, and I really think it's a model that should be followed. This is something that hadn't occurred in the past, the ZBA re recognized that they needed to tighten up the procedures a little bit. And this process that they're using, this form, complies with the proposed amendment. This amendment would not require any change to what the ZBA is currently doing in their special permit process. So at this point, you might be saying, well, what do we even need a bylaw change for? Well, the problem, as I see it, rests with the way the redevelopment board is handling their special permits. And if we go on to the next page, what I'm showing here is the existing form that the ZBA is using, I'm sorry, that the ARB is using, and this is an actual example. I'm sure you can't read all the text, but what I want to point out is that everything I've highlighted in yellow is wrong. And this form was actually presented to the ARB in one of their special permit hearings. And you know, I don't want to sound too critical. These, these forms are typically done by an architect or people who aren't very familiar with the zoning bylaw. And I'm just pointing out the errors to uh, emphasize the fact that we really need to have a professional in the inspectional services department reviewing these as they do for the forms that the ZBA is using. What happens is when this goes before the, um, the redevelopment board, is that the interpretation of the bylaw is left to the attorney representing the applicant. And that's not right. There should be an independent review that the board can rely on and not have to listen to what the attorneys for the applicants are saying. And I realize that a lot of these attorneys have very close ties with the selectmen. I don't think that's acceptable. And I don't think it's acceptable that certain applicants may have special ties with people in town. We need to have consistent treatment for all applicants, and what I want to do is bring the quality of the reviews that the ZBA is using to the ARB, and that's really what's driving this, um, this bylaw change. I see I don't have a lot of time, and I'd like to address specifically some of the comments of the Finance Committee, because they raised the question or concerned about cost. And a couple things to emphasize. One, that this is not a spending article. No money was requested. None is needed. And I think the best um, example or argument for why no money is needed is the work that the ZBA has, is already doing. 
The form that I showed you in the process is relatively new. It's only been implemented over the past couple months. It has not cost anything, yet, and there have been no additional staff hired to implement it, because this, this bylaw change itself does not require additional reviews. It just requires the documentation of those reviews and the sign-off for what's already being done. And it seems to me as the town is moving forward with um, its master planning process, it's incumbent upon the town to have maximum credibility in the way its zoning uh, articles are enforced. And I think if you saw Thursday's paper, you saw that the um, League of Women Voters supported this as a good government measure, and I hope you will too. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Marr, no, oh, excuse me. Mr. Byrne, you wanted to address the article first. Moderate, may I stay in the chamber? If I, if I you can sit right over there next to the ARB table. Yeah. Mr. Byrne, you're up. All right. Sorry, John. Uh, Michael Byrne, Director of Inspectional Services. Um, I guess I'll have to try to wing this a little bit because the article, as submitted, had much more involved with than simply putting a signature on. Um, the special permit, but that's what was presented. So I guess, John, I would have to ask, is that what I would be re reporting on? Because there are two sections to, there are, there are two sections to this article. All that's before us is Mr. But, but only, he's only addressed, there's only been one addressed. Yeah, just Mr. Rudiman's motion. He, correct. Right, there's one that talks about, um, should not take final provisions. Uh, in order to ensure all provisions of the bylaw are met, copies of all special permit applications shall be provided to inspector of buildings for review. I'm assuming that's where the signature comes through. And then the ZBA, or in cases of section 1106, the ARB shall not take final action on a special permit until it is received in writing from the inspector of buildings of his or her designee. A listing of the bylaw provisions that the ZBA or ARB as applicable shall rule upon along with an indication of conformance with the special permit application with all provisions of the bylaw not to be specifically ruled upon by the ZBA IRB. So my, I guess my question- That's my, all we're speaking about. That's all that's before us. All, all of this here, not been, even though it wasn't presented to us. It was presented to us by email through the list and okay. it was on okay. our chairs. Okay, so I'm gonna, yeah. I'll try. Then I will answer this way, sorry, excuse me. Um, Michael Byrne, Director of Inspectional Services. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening, town meeting members, elected and appointed officials, fellow department heads, and especially to the residents of the town of Arlington, who have bestowed upon us the responsibility of following applicable laws, bylaws, associated, regula associated regulations, and when properly put before this body, and if affirmatively voted upon, this body can amend our bylaws. It is with this in mind I stand before you this evening. Unfortunately, not all not always are proposed warrant articles or their amendments as simple to implement as one would wish. In this particular case, there are several obstacles with the implementation of Article 6, most important being that Mass General Law Chapter 143 and 780 CMR, the Mass State Building Code, Chapters 104.1 and 104.7, which I believe are up on the board now, set forth the specific duties and requirements of the building inspector, including record keeping, process and even gives us power to waive permit requirements. Article 6, if allowed, not only adds to the inspector, building inspector's duties, but tells him how and when to do his job. The Board of Bu Building Regulations and Standards and State Inspector's Office have stated in previous situations, but also in this specific situation, have stated this type of change must be pursued through the building code amendment process at the state level where the inspectors duties are promulgated. Thus, if this article were to pass this evening, it very well would be seen as at the state level to be interfering with the statutorily defined duties of the building inspector as 780 CMR 101.4 and 105.312 indicate, which brings the zoning into the building code. I've been asked if the language such as that in Article 6 were to come into effect, what burden and cost would the Inspectional Services Department have to bear? In short, with a staff of four inspectors and 1.25 administrative staff, during 2014, our department issued a total of 5,907 permits, 2,700 of which were building permit related, and we performed an estimated 18,000 field inspections and probably 8,000 plan reviews. Now think of that, for four, for four inspectors 
and one and a half, one and a quarter staff. So far this year, as of this morning, there's been eight applications for special permit hearings. As we are one third of the way through the year, we can reasonably anticipate 24 such hearings. I realize that the article, the language of Article 6 seems innocuous, but, 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 but one must understand in, in order for inspectional services to not only give a listing of the provisions of the bylaw to be ruled upon, now this is the section that was not addressed a few moments ago, um, not only give a listing of the provisions of the bylaw to be ruled upon, which is already part of the special permit application, we would have to give an indication of conformance with any other provisions of the bylaw. Now, I think we're rolling, the, we'll be rolling the zoning bylaw if we haven't already, um, to specifically ruled upon by the ZBA or ARB. Well, just the zoning bylaw has 12 articles, 106 sections, and it's on 127 pages. Chapter 40A of the Mass General, the, the, the State Zoning Enabling Act, alone has 17 sections and probably in close to another 100 and something pages. Um, and other reference regulations in Chapter 40A in the Zoning Bylaw include the State Building Code, Mass Wetland Protection Regulations, DEP regulations, firm, mat, firm maps, etc. It would be my best estimate for the inspectional services to indicate conformance with all of the above for each special permit. We should anticipate an additional 1.5 to 2.0 full-time employees. One statement that stuck with me during the process was the question the Zoning Board of Appeals asked when this article was brought before them by the proponent after stating they had no issues with receiving information from special services until they stated, why try to fix a problem we don't have? I'd like to conclude that, statement, that State Building Inspector Ron Wetmore was hoping to be here tonight, but he did forward his email for any other questions by town meeting members. Um, I hope I've answered any questions, but obviously I stand for any questions uh, by anybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Marr? John Marr, Precinct 14. I found a lot of bad ideas have a certain surface appeal, and this certainly is not an exception. Why not give the special permit granting authorities as much information as possible? It sounds like a very good government idea. There are many reasons why this article, this substitute motion should fail. It asked the, the substitute motion asked the building inspector to perform two tasks. One is to list the by, uh, with regard to special permits, he asked, it, it asked the, bill, the building inspector to list the bylaw provisions that are implicated to advise the special permit granting authority, the redevelopment or zoning board, what they should be focusing on. As town council uh, for many years, more years than I can remember, uh, I, I never was once given the impression that the uh, special permit granting authorities lacked any knowledge as to what the special permit provisions of the zoning bylaw were implicated. As been stated before by other individuals, this is a solution in search of a problem. The building inspector all must also must certify that the project in question complies with every aspect of the zoning bylaw. There are over 100 provisions of the zoning bylaw that he would have to review. As the town finance committee has pointed out, additional staff would certainly be necessary to accomplish this task. Most important of all, when a special permit application is filed, the special permit granting authority only has a certain amount of time to file their decision. If they don't file it within that time period, generally 45 days, what happens is the special permit is deemed granted as a constructive grant. In other words, if because of the additional time needed uh, to wait for the building inspector, and they may not issue their opinion until the building inspector uh, provides this information, you run the risk of having a very short time frame for the special permit granting authority to consider what's before them and risking a constructive grant. At least one state official that I'm aware of has indicated uh, who oversees building inspections throughout the Commonwealth that this provision is illegal, but I'll leave that to uh, the town council. This substitute motion is an invitation to litigation. 
the proponent of this article, in fact, is quite given to litigation, attacking town officials and putting their families and personal assets at risk. Yeah, that's John. Please bear with me. In Middlesex Superior Court Civil Action 2012, uh, 460, 467. John, John, please keep it to the article. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing the article, Mr. Well, uh, Mr. Moderator. Well, talking about past litigation. No, the, uh, the town meeting needs to know that Mr. Loretti sued the town, cost, costing the town $50,000. Uh, it, it relates Mr. to special permit granting authorities. Mr. Costing the town $50,000 in outside Mar, council fees. Please bring it back in. We don't have to talk about past history regarding the, the gentleman and the town. Just talk to the issue it, on it the force. It relates to special permit granting authorities that, and the procedures that they had to operate under. Yes. The reason that uh, Juliana Rice is no longer town council was because she was sued individually by Mr. Loretti. I am not, as a town meeting member, I am not going to be part, uh, party to personal vendettas against Mr. Byrne, which Mr. Loretti has, and I suggest that you don't either. I'm going to vote against the substitute motion, and I urge you to do the same. Thank you. The gentleman over here, yes. Ryan Farrar, Precinct 4. So um, when I think of this, I think of it a little differently. I think of um, town meeting and its relationship um, with uh, the uh, redevelopment board uh, and the ZBA. And really, when you think about what we do here as, as an entity, we provide general policy guidance to these groups. We vote on zoning bylaws, and we generally direct the town what we want and where we want it. So that's really our big picture guide and what we want and how we want to sort of direct the folks. So when I think of this, this is really just the opposite of that. This is micromanagement. This is telling uh, how, uh, how processes can be improved when in fact the boards themselves have indicated that it's an improvement they don't need. The, uh, the Redevelopment Board actually voted no action on this, and um, the ZBA, when, as, as I understand it, when the proponent came before them, basically asked the question, what problem is it you're trying to solve? So when um, I hear that, and I also think about the precedent, because the building inspector has to uphold state codes, right? So we've got that in other places as well, whether it be health or conservation commission. Think about the precedent that this might set to ask for other requirements where any judgment that's made by town staff has to also include all of the various elements, both the reasons that are applicable and not applicable as to why a decision's made. It could add a lot more work and uh, a lot more costs. So I think it's something that should really be very careful and we as an entity have to be very careful about. Uh, I close with this that you know, the proponent said before that he aims to improve the process and wants to do a good government thing. And to me, part of one of the things that you do in good government is that you actually want to gain the support of the committee you're purporting to help. They say they don't need the assistance. They say that what's there already, and as I understand it, the relationship between the boards and the staff is a strong one. When questions come up and the regular conversations, the dialogue's there. This is truly a solution in search of a problem town meeting. So I, I encourage you strongly to uh, uh, vote down the proposed substitute motion. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Berg. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Paul Bayer, Precinct 13, and a member of the Finance Committee and a member of the subcommittee of the Finance Committee that looks at the building inspector's um, budget. Um, the first thing the 
proponent was saying that there was no financial um, implication of this um, uh, substitute motion. Uh, when we started our uh, finance committee process this year, we asked the proponent to come in and talk to us about it. Um, as it was originally expressed in the warrant, the article was very broad and implied that that the amount of work that would be required of the Inspectional Services Department to satisfy this was, was really much greater than what was um, presented here. Um, the, the proponent um, declined to come and spoke with us, speak with us, so we had really no choice but to um, uh, vote no action, or vote to support the Redevelopment Board vote no action because we just didn't know what was really going to be involved in this article. Um, as you see, the, the Finance Committee was not unanimous and the reason is not that there were five people who believed that this should go through, but rather that there were five people who believed that either we needed more information or that it was not actually going to involve any financial um, implications, so it was um, voted down. So um, I hope you will agree with the uh, Redevelopment Board and the Finance Committee and uh, vote no action on this article. Thank you, Mr. Bayer. Um, it's 9.23. Let's take our seven-minute break. And we'll come back and we'll continue. Yeah. Oh, what do you want, 10? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So,
process went quite well. There was more insight, which was understandable. We went to a, we went to a consultant. It's going to take about ten grand. That thing hasn't been touched in thirty years. Who's responsible? Okay, what part of the town? The Department of Public Works. Yeah, I wish that it really fit in really well. Uh, you mean I thought you might? No, I know you're ten thousand dollars for professional restore. I think we can look at the capital budget. Okay, capital budget. Yeah, I think we have some. Okay. No, my thought.
Okay, let's come to order. Please come to order. Next. No, you hadn't, Mr. McKinney. These are two substitute motions, right? On. You don't have to yell it out on the floor. No, I'll say I already have them. Yeah, I emailed the school already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, you know, you have to get three copies. Now uh, they're both for 933. Yeah. Actually, on uh, both sides. Then. So I just oh. make sure you get more than three. Oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Harrington, you're next on the list. Yep. You gotta calm him down first. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Harrington has the floor. Please be quiet. Sit down. We're going. All right, Stephen, go. Time's running. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask a couple questions. Yes, sir. Um, oh, Stephen Harrington, Precinct 13. Mr. Moderator, I'd like to ask a question. Um, how many special permits are issued by the Redevelopment Board you know, in a year? It doesn't have to be exact. Just to give us an understanding of. Mr. Burnell, can you answer that? How many? On average? Average of five. Five permits a year. Five. Two page report. Two pages. Maybe 40 lines, a couple columns. Five permits a year we're talking about. When this came in front of the Finance Committee, it was said that it'll cost $250,000 to do this. Five two page reports a year. Mr. Moderator, could I ask someone whether or not the Attorney General's office would be likely to accept this zoning change? Mr. Heim? <clears throat> You're asking a lawyer a question. He could take 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking a lawyer with a new child a question. <laughs> Doug Heim, Town Council, good evening. So there's two separate issues, legal issues, that are raised this evening. Uh, the first doesn't really have to do with the Attorney General's office. If the building inspector and state officials from the Board of Building uh, Regulations and Standards are contending that this is outside or this would in interfere with or frustrate authorities derived from state law, that's not necessarily going to be an issue that the Attorney General is going to pay attention to uh, unless and until those state officials petition the Attorney General. I just can't give you a satisfactory answer as to what the Attorney General's reaction to that situation is going to be. And there's also the possibility of litigation that would be outside of the Attorney General's authority to look at a bylaw uh, if it were approved. With respect to the uh, issue of whether or not the Attorney General would allow this type of zoning bylaw, I think it's kind of a close question. But the major concern that they would express is that if the building inspector is representing that he can't, um, he can't uh, ensure that these permits, uh, that these, these, this bylaw is going to be met, you have the issue that I believe Mr. Marr addressed, which is that uh, if the permit granting authority doesn't issue a decision within a timeline, 
they're either going to be forced into one of two situations. Constructive grant of the permit, which means a permit gets issued by default without addressing it on its merits or without putting any conditions on it, or violating our own local zoning, zoning bylaws because the building inspector hasn't provided them with the reports that our zoning bylaw says they have to have before they make a decision. And that is the, I think, the primary issue that would be of concern of the Attorney General. Thank you. So we have five permits, two pages. Um, on last question, Mr. Moderator. Um, are those five permits, can we, do we know who the attorney on, say, any one of them is? That's kind of outside the scope. Well, could we say one. that, is it possible that the attorney, say, on the one that Mr. The one that showed I did one. on the housing authority? Excuse me, I did one. I did a permit, special permit. Did any um, other elected officials do um, a special permit? I don't think any of them are lawyers. The housing corp? Who was the legal counsel for the housing corp example that Ms. Loretti showed us? No idea. Could you ask maybe the redevelopment board knows? They don't remember. Mary Wynne Stanley O'Connor, another elected official, you need to pass this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Schlickman, you're next. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. What we have here apparently is, is a desire to go and add thickets of uh, bureaucratic red tape to the uh, current process, which may not be a bad thing, except that by creating a requirement for a thicket of bureaucratic red tape. If anything goes wrong with that thicket of bureaucratic red tape, it now becomes open season for attorneys. And if you know anything about attorneys, they are integral to the process of appealing for zoning variances and special permits. So they're all over the process and all over the implication and the results. If we want to leave ourselves in a position where we are more open to litigation just because of the process that we're putting into the bylaw. If we're open to the point where someone could challenge a determination of the zoning board or the redevelopment board based on failure to comply with this new bylaw to the extent that it is required, go ahead and pass this thing. The zoning board has proven that administratively they can handle this on their own. I believe the redevelopment board can and does collect the requisite information they need to make the case without an adjustment to the bylaw. And I think that the uh, argument being made by the finance committee that the additional work required to comply with this would be uh, expensive and that it will require more personnel in order to do this. So I urge a no vote on this uh, substitute motion. Thank you, sir. Mr. Burnell, you are next. Whoops. Good evening, Andrew Burnell, chair of the redevelopment board. Uh, I'd like to echo something that Mr. Schlickman just said. The Redevelopment Board already collects the requisite information required to vote on a special permit. As others have said tonight, this is a, an amendment, a change, to a problem that doesn't exist. We get what we need from inspectional services. We get what we need from planning and zoning. We had the opportunity to review this proposed article several months ago, and that was the decision that the Board came to after much debate. Uh, setting costs aside, setting other things aside. The department heads, the people that do their, their jobs here, do their jobs. They give us what we need to make an appropriate decision. We're appointed to make that decision. Uh, you know, this, the, the, the information is there. It's, prevented, it's presented to us in the appropriate fashion. If we have questions, we're allowed to ask. If we need to bring Mr. Byrne in to give us clarification, we can continue a hearing and do so. If we need input from planning, uh, we can do so. The lawyer for the proponent on any special permit certainly does not drive the argument here. We have the information. I believe we act appropriately and necessary. Um, 
Again, this seeks to solve a problem that simply does not exist. The work is done already. This adds an additional layer on to people who are already working very hard, uh, and it opens up the possibility for litigation. This is vague. This is very unclear, this language here. If you vote for it, I am concerned what might happen. Um, there is a very good reason that the board decided to take no action on this measure when we had the opportunity to do so. I hope that you would do the same. Thank you. Mr. McCabe, you're next on the list. <coughs> Mark McKay, Precinct 2. I move to terminate all debate on this motion of Article 6 and all matters before it. We have a motion to terminate debate on Article 6 and all matters before us. Uh, takes a two-third vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, it is a two-third vote. Okay. So, this is our first real vote of the night. I'm going to explain what we're going to do. First, we're going to vote on the proposed substitute motion of Mr. Ruderman. Depending upon how that goes, we'll then vote on the final vote as substituted or the recommended vote of the finance of the uh, ARB. So first, we're gonna vote on Mr. Ruderman's vote. Um, Mr. Renault, as soon as you're ready. Okay. So, the voting window is now open. Vote one for yes. If you want the substitute motion, vote two for no if you do not want it. Vote. The substitute motion fails. It's a no vote, 171 against, 26 in the affirmative. Point of order. Yeah. I don't know if the point of order might be something else, but uh, isn't it important to explain how people should vote before the 20 seconds begins to bell? Yeah. That's what I did. I explained, then I said yes, vote. Point of order. What's your point of order? Could I see on um, this uh, uh, voting? You've got to get five people to rise. Okay, so five people have arisen. There it is. Remember, these are available the next day on the website. Yes, sir. This article was about... That's not a point of order. Okay. Point of order. Should Mr. Byrne Stephen have voted on an article he has that no, affected he, his father? It has, does not affect his father. It affects the bylaws of the town of Arlington. That's not a point of order. Mr. Byrne Stephen has no financial interest in this, so he's not violating our rules against um, whatever they are. It's conflict of interest. So his vote was proper, and that's not a point of order. That's almost a personal attack. We won't have that anymore. That, okay, we have now before us the recommended vote of the ARB for no action. Are you ready, Mr. Mon or no? Sir. Who? Yes, ma'am. Well, then go see Eric. Go see Eric. Is something wrong with your clicker? Right now. We're going to vote again. We're going to use the clicks in about three seconds. So if you've got a problem, go over there and see him.
So while they determine if their machine is broken or what, it wouldn't have changed the total at all because of the quantum of vote. And even if they voted in the affirmative, it would not have changed the two thirds, the, the majority vote. Now we have three people. All right, one down. I'm going to swap barbers out. Your clicker broken? Two? Yes. Can we proceed? Okay, now we have the recommended vote of the ARB for no action. Mr. Renault, are you ready? If you're in favor of the recommended vote of no action, please vote one. If you're against it, please vote two. One meaning yes, two is no. And the window's open. Ma'am. Uh, your, your introduction to this was confusing. Okay, well, I said we're voting on the, well, no means you do not want no action. One is you're voting for no action. Did your vote get miscast? Miss, do you want to see this? Can we see what the result of the no action vote is? Oh, shush. We made, it's a no action vote. It's a yes, no vote. So we have 145 yeses and 45 noes. So no action wins. Do we want to vote again? No. no, okay. I declare it a no action vote. We will move on to Article 7. Carl. Yeah, so Mr. Um, Mr. Renault, don't start the clock until I give you the thumbs up. So I understand, they all understand, that we all understand it's ready to go. Good thing it was an easy vote. Now, that brings forth Article 7. Sir, Mr. Deist. Okay. Okay, on a no action vote, that means nothing's going to happen, we're voting no. So to vote no, you have to vote yes. <laughs> All right, Article 7 is before us. We have before us a recommended vote of the um, selectmen and the recommended vote of the ARB. Mr. Burnell. Thank you, Andrew Bonnell, uh, Chairman of the Reader Development Board. Mr. Moderator, I was informed during our break that the proponent of this warrant article is out of town and would like to continue this to Wednesday, uh, the next date when he will be available and back in town. Okay, so the, the, the proponent of the article is Mr. Christian Klein. Christian is not here this evening. He was out of town on a family matter. Um, he will be back on Wednesday and he asks that we postpone this vote until Wednesday. Um, so, so we now have a motion on the floor, please second. second. Say all in favor of postponing this article till Wednesday, the 29th, please say yes. Yes. All opposed? No. It is postponed. We'll Thank take you, up Mr. Article Moderator. 27th, first thing, Wednesday. Okay, so seven is postponed. Four twenty-nine. that brings us to article Eight. By Mint, we have before us the recommended vote of the selectmen. They wish to speak to that. If not, we have a Mr. Warden. Yes. 
Uh, you, know, Ms. you want to speak to it? Okay. Mr. Warden, uh, Mr. Greeley is going to speak to it. He'd be next. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Sorry, sir. Uh, it, basically, the Board of Selectmen uh, are recommending no action on this uh, because so we feel that this is under your purview in terms of the uh, time limiting for speakers. Oh, so the selectmen have changed their recommended vote to no action. I'm sorry. I'm, can you explain it? Sorry, Doug. Sure. Yep, I'm sorry. I got confused on that. He's unchanging. He's, no, okay. He's unchanging his no action. Yes. Mr. Hine. No, we are supporting it. Sorry. It oh. it You're, Doug, go ahead and explain what's going on. Doug Heim, Town Council, um, just a quick note about the Article 8. Um, so basically the selectmen support a uh, vote of favorable action on this to amend the current uh, s limits on speaking time for announcements reports as codified in the bylaw. Um, this is not a, um, um, a drastic change, but rather uh, seeks to further clarify what exactly uh, we want to be using town meetings time to speak about not. I don't want to take up too much time because I know that the proponent of the article, Mr. Schlickman, is here and he presented at the Selectman's hearing, but the Selectman's support a vote of favorable action on this. Okay. Mr. Warden has a sub substitute motion. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, John Warden, uh, Precinct 8, uh, <clears throat> member of the uh, town Meeting Procedures Committee. Um, I'd like to point out that you, the town meeting members, uh, at some time in the past established by bylaw a committee to deal with town meeting procedures. And so the way that typically works is if someone has an idea for the improvement of town meeting, hard to conceive how that might happen, but it's conceivable, uh, that um, they, uh, they, that, that person would come uh, to the committee, and we don't meet very often, but we, we meet when, when, when necessary, and talk it over and figure out, well, yeah, this is, this is something that could be uh, tinkered with, or we should maybe do a bylaw, or maybe it's something that can be adjusted just by the sort of procedures that the moderator has mentioned at the outset of the meeting by on his own uh, power under the general laws to control the meeting. Uh, limit uh, uh, announcements and, and resolutions uh, to uh, f four minutes rather than the usual speaking time. And um, uh, in, in the past, uh, it, it has been uh, a, a problem uh, that some people would uh, have, have a, a long report and they would read it and sometimes they'd also have it on the screen and, and then it would sort of go on and on. So, so it, it was maybe desirable to, to trim these things down a bit. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, and we did, um, uh, the, the proponent of this did not, did not come to the Town Meeting Procedures Committee, the one you established to think about these things in the first instance. Um, but um, we, did, we, we, we did consider it and um, we, um, uh, we came up with a substitute motion, which uh, it has been put on your chairs. And uh, do you have a copy of it, Mr. Moderator? Yes, I do, sir. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, and the, uh, is, is anyone who, who doesn't have it, I'd be glad to uh, read it if you, uh, if you don't have it. Um, so it says substitute motion for, it was in the, in the report of the Town Meeting Procedures Committee, uh, the, the motion that, that I'm bringing forward at this point. Um, and, we, we feel that uh, the, the proposal uh, put forth by the selectmen is, um, it's long and cumbersome. It's, it's, it's an example of a, a camel as a horse designed by a committee. And, and, we, and, and we think if, if, if you must have a bylaw to regulate what the moderator says he's going to do under the power he already has, then don't have these, all these different categories of votes and is this vote of this kind or is it of that kind? Is it four minutes or seven minutes or whatever? No, we have a very short and, and simple uh, definition 
Uh, it, it just says re re reports will be four minutes. Uh, and um, uh, if you must have a bylaw, we recommend uh, as your procedures committee that this bylaw, that this substitute motion be adopted as, as the bylaw or as the change to the bylaw. Um, but actually, it, it, we, we, really, we, we feel that <coughs> we, we, if you must have a bylaw, you should substitute this. If you feel, as, as frankly as we do, that, that you don't really need another bylaw, uh, then we urge you to vote down the whole business. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we have Mr. Warden's um, motion in front of us, Mr. Schlickman. Paul Schlickman, Precinct 9. I'd like to request 87 minutes for, for the purpose of presenting a video replay of the announcements and reports from the May 12th meeting, fifth session of our last annual town meeting. Um, <clears throat> 87 seconds, you have it, go ahead. Okay. I don't think that's going anywhere. But on a couple of nights last year, we came perilously close to having the announcements bump up against the 9.30 break. Members of Congress can pack a mighty punch in their one-minute statements. Just one minute at the podium can point us to announcements and reports with more extensive text in email or on the web. Literature can be placed on the seats in town hall, trust me, there are times when people need good reading material during town meeting. More extensive reports and the Uncle Sam song could be taped at the ACMI studio for multiple joyous replays. <laughs> Our bylaw regulates speaking time on the business of the meeting, but not on remarks with no relevance to the warrant. Seems kind of backwards to me and I hope you agree. I have no objection to the substitute motion, though I prefer less than four minutes, but I urge you adopt one of the versions before you tonight. Thank you. Mr. O'Connor. James O'Connor, Precinct 19, a member of the Town Meeting Procedures Committee. What I'd like to highlight for you is the bottom paragraph of our report, Article 8, versus the section of the Selectman's report on page 3. And the matter that we addressed was actionable versus unactionable matters. And we deliberated over this for an hour and a half. Um, we covered a lot of details and possibilities, but primarily the concerns that we bring to us here are warrant articles and as much as we want to hear a lot of other discussion as to things that matter and pertain to the town, they're not matters of the warrant articles. What we have been concerned about is that, frankly, today almost every seat is full. I congratulate all of you for being here today, but I can promise you by session four and five, especially after the break, there's quite a few less people. A lot of people have approached members of the town meeting procedure committee and said, how can we reduce the lack of attendance? You'll hear about that in article 45. But what we're looking at here is an efficient communication method, and all we're asking you to do is let the moderator do his job, just as the building inspector asked that he could do his job in the preceding article. And what we're looking at here is the moderator has the power to terminate um, anybody's idea of going 17 and a half minutes or Paul's 87 minutes because he brings it to the floor and I'm sure all of you don't want 87 minutes on a topic. So I'd like to be brief and just say in less than three and a half minutes, I ask you to vote for the substitute motion if it, you're going to vote for a motion and then terminate the whole matter by voting no action because the moderator can do the job as he's already done. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jamison. Uh, 
Gordon Jamison, Precinct 12. Um, I move the matter and all the motion and all matters before us. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Oh, is that a motion to terminate debate? Oh, good. We have a motion to terminate debate on all matters under the article before us. All requires a two-third vote. All in favor to terminate debate, please say yes. Yes. Opposed? No. In my opinion, it is a two-third vote. Okay. So now we're going to take a minute. I'm going to explain what we have. We have before us Mr. Warden's substitute motion, which would substitute the procedure committee bylaw proposal for the selectment. So if you want to go with the town meeting procedure committee, you will vote yes on Mr. Warden's substitute motion. Mr. Renault, are you ready? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and start the voting window. If you want Mr. Warden's vote, yes. If you don't want Mr. Warden's vote, no. Okay, time's up, and tally. We have 164 in the affirmative, 35 in the negative. Mr. Warden's substitute motion passes. So now we have before us the recommend, this is gonna sound weird to the Newtown meeting members. We have the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen as substituted by Mr. Warden's motion. So we're now voting whether or not we wanna make Mr. Warden's motion a town bylaw or not. If we want to make a bylaw regulating speaking on articles, vote yes. If you don't and want to just go with, I'm not done. If you want to vote to make a bylaw to regulate speaking times under announcements and resolutions, you'll vote one. If you think we don't need such a bylaw, you'll vote two. One, for yes, we want it. Two, no, we don't want it. Are you ready, Mr. Renault? Yes, go ahead and vote. We have 104 people Voting yes in the affirmative, we now have a bylaw to regulate speakers under announcements and resolutions to four minutes. So that passes, as Mr. Warden has dictated. And that is a vote, and I so declare it. That closes Article 8 and brings us to Article 9. Um, Article 9, we have the recommended vote of the selectmen of no action. I, I see, Steve. Go ahead, Mr. Greeley. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mr. Moderator, my own colleagues in town meeting, I apologize for confusing things on the last one, but I'm ready on this one. Article 9, the Board of Selectmen is recommending no action. Two primary reasons. We believe that the current uh, commission does an excellent job, and there was nothing specific uh, presented to the Board of Selectmen for us to vote on. So we recommend no action. Mr. Harrington, you're next. Can I have a little more time? You can. Thank you. Stephen Harrington, town meeting member, precinct 13. So um, I want you to look at Article 33, the recommended vote from the Finance Committee. Open it up, take a look at it. Because Articles 9 and Articles 33 are very much linked. I asked wait, Mr. Are you, Tosti, wait, are you putting a recommended vote in front of us? Substitute. Substitute. You, no, did you get it seconded? Oh, okay, go ahead. Now we have something to talk about. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So take a look at that article. You'll see, I, I asked Mr. Tosti if we could combine the two. Because really, the recommended vote from the Finance Committee on Article 33 is essentially what I'm asking you in a substitute motion on Article 9. And so we're going to get to talk about this twice. Okay? So if you look at it, the only difference is that the FinCom wants to make this a Board of Selectmen initiative, and I want to make this a town meeting initiative. This is a town meeting committee. So what's on the screen first? Let's start at the end. Over the past decade, 
This is the number of investigations and complaints that have been brought to the Human Rights Commission by um, residents. And um, you'll see there's been two. And, um, and the reason is, and, and this isn't anything bad about the Human Rights Commission people, they're actually very eager to be involved. But in 1993, when the Human Rights Commission was started, the discrimination was based on housing and on employment. Guess what? It doesn't happen, any oh, hey, you get your chance to speak. It doesn't happen anymore, okay? It doesn't happen. And what's the greatest problem in front of us, the greatest civil rights issue of our time, is the de facto discrimination by public entities, whether it's police in Missouri, whether it's school departments with suspensions of students, whether it's boards that won't follow the Americans with Disabilities Act. So what I'm asking you tonight is really simple. It doesn't bind anyone to anything. It's to form a committee, a town meeting committee, of five members that are appointed by the moderator to look at the bylaw and come back next year and make some changes. Now let's talk about why this is important. Two examples. One, out of school suspensions. Mr. Show the next page, please. So go down. Mr. Greeley said that um, he asked what I wanted to vote on. And I actually answered him pretty much what I'm telling you tonight. I want you to acknowledge by forming this committee that you care about de facto discrimination by public entities. And I'm asking you at town meeting to form a committee of five members appointed by the moderator to make a recommendation. And the reason that that's important isn't because of the commission wanting this, it's about residents needing this. So, out of school suspensions. Here's example number one. Back in September, I found out by looking at the Department of Justice report that the school committee provides them, the school department, that if you were an African American student in the Allenton Public Schools, you were 11 times more likely to be suspended than a white student. That was shocking. So, I, had the, I went to the school committee. The school department revised the numbers down to only six times as much, twice the national average. And they had preliminary numbers for 2013, six times as much, twice the national average. If you're a black student in the Allen Public Schools, you're six times more likely to be suspended. Suspensions to incarceration track is what they call it. If you're suspended, you're more likely to be incarcerated. We're only talking about 100 instances. So I went to the Human Rights Commission, and it was really hard to make a complaint. Uh, it was hard to get in touch with them. It was hard to get them to put me on the agenda. They refused to put me on the agenda. Excuse me, let's, do you want to get on the list? Because it was hard to get on the agenda. I, I went to public participation. I asked them to form a subcommittee. And they did, they obliged me because they're good people. I asked the school department, the school committee, to form a subcommittee, and they did, well, after two times, to look at this. Everyone involved takes it seriously. Unfortunately, the school department saying, well, they can't provide the data to this committee or to the Human Rights Commission because privacy records. That leaves me with only one option. I'm gonna to have to ask the Human Rights Commission to refer this to the Department of Justice because I think it's really important we know why we were actually suspending African-American students at such a high rate. The second one is the Americans with Disabilities Act. If you go to the Board of Selectmen, like I did tonight, and you go to talk to them and ask them anything, they make you stand up at a microphone with nothing, no podium, nowhere to rest your papers, you can't sit down for up to a half an hour. Okay, imagine if we asked all the people behind us to get rid of the tables, get rid of the chairs, stand up in the corner and wait until we have a question for you. They do this every night that they meet. And that's why Mr. Greeley didn't like when I pointed that out to him. And when he bullied me into asking what I wanted, I told him exactly what I wanted. That I wanted town meeting to take seriously the de facto discrimination by public entities by forming a committee of five people signed by the moderator to make changes to the bylaw so that residents can make complaints and get them resolved. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harris.
E.J. Harris, Precinct 5. Um, I want to start because I want to be sure that we understand that this part isn't ironic. Um, as far as I can tell, the Human Rights Commission does excellent work and are genuinely trying to pursue better life in the town of Arlington. And so even if we disagreed with all of their decisions, they would still deserve our respect and gratitude. That said, I don't think this is about their performance. From my point of view, it's about whether or not my girlfriend is going to leave me, and I'll explain why. Mm -hmm. um, you see, about starting this fall, she, went, she started going to this silly looking building across from the Granary Burying Ground down by uh, uh, the Park Street Tea Stop, a uh, Suffolk Law School, I guess. Um, and they gave her these giant books uh, about personal jurisdiction and the elements of felonies and what constitutes negligence and how not to keep your promises, which I guess in Latin is called contracts. And all we have talked about and all that we have done for the last nine months has been talk about what's in these books. Literally, right before I'm coming to town meeting, she texts me tonight and say, doesn't say, good luck at town meeting, doesn't say I'm glad you're in my life, says, here's this case that we're talking about, about explosive ordinance and construction and its effect on farmed mink. Literally. The worst of this is my birthday was Saturday and she was so busy writing a paper for one of her courses uh, that I didn't get any chocolate chip cookies for my birthday, which if you've had her cookies, you would complain about that to a room full of strangers too. I'm serious. Why do I mention it? She tells me that the reason she's going through this process and apparently intends it for another three years um, is that she wants to participate in this apparently 400 year old system of justice where, which has, I guess, been protecting the rights of the people of Massachusetts since our founding, more or less. Um, if that's not true, that she is taking the most elaborate steps to avoid me and get me to stop talking to her that anyone has ever taken, which is an achievement. Uh, I'm sure, sure you all understand the idea of wanting me to stop talking, but seriously. <laughs> She is, she is really working hard at that, if that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. The moral of the story is, if the police beat you up like they did in Ferguson, you need a lawyer. If you've been unjustly suspended from school, you need a lawyer. If town entities have violated the ADA, you need to sue those town entities. You need a lawyer. The Human Rights Commission does excellent work. They can't redress these things like the tort system can. If you don't, if whatever your complaint is doesn't rise to the level of needing a lawyer, doesn't rise to the level of a lawsuit, I do have one other avenue of redress other than the Human Rights Commission that I'd like to propose to you all. Interrogating town department heads during uh, the budget debate. This is a time-honored town meeting tradition and something I know many people here enjoy. But what you really need is somebody who's young, who's brash, possibly somebody who's been considering harassing town officials to be a recreational activity since he was about 17. Mr. Schlickman can tell you about that. Um, <laughs> certainly, you would need someone strong-willed, utterly heedless of personal consequence, and almost pathologically addicted to arguing. Uh, Wait yeah. a minute, you guys this don't think that's why my girlfriend wants to leave Mr. me. Mr. Harris, Mr. Harris, this, Mr. Harris. This, studying this is totally Mr. Harris, necessary. that is. Yeah. Is this within scope? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm thinking it's. I'm thinking I know more Everything about your cookies and girlfriend than I need to. Every, sir, probably true. It's Everything very I true. I told you, Mr. Moderator, demonstrates I think why this doesn't need to be studied why any future expansion is ill-considered and why we should put this to bed tonight rather than spend future meeting time on this. I urge a no vote. Thank you. Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. How do I follow that? <laughs> I can't possibly. I just want to make two points of clarification 
Uh, first of all, uh, on points that Mr. Harrington made, and uh, one, we all agree that the Human Rights Commission does an excellent job. Why do we need to change anything? But first of all, he said, they make you stand up. I'd like you to know that for that hearing, Mr. Harrington requested through the mayor of Arlington that we provide a chair, a table, and a microphone uh, for him, and that evening those were provided, as we would for anybody who needs such things. Uh, secondly, four members of the Board of Selectmen that night asked him what he was proposing, and not once did he bring up, which was brought up tonight, that he wants this to be a town meeting uh, committee instead of uh, the Board of Selectmen. Never brought up, so uh, my colleagues. Oh, is it written on that? I'd ask you to watch the tape. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Written on that. Okay. Um, the lady behind Clarissa. I don't know everybody's name yet. Oh, it's, I, why? You got a haircut. That's why I don't recognize you. Miss Barron. Thanks. Sherry Barron, Precinct 7, and member of the Human Rights Commission. Um, to Mr. Harrington's uh, first or second point about the small number of complaints, um, which I can only think that he's bringing up, well, I, I shouldn't deign to, to know that I think what he's thinking, but um, yes, we do have a very small number of complaints. Whenever I get up to speak or anyone speaks before you through the human, for the Human Rights Commission, we say that's the good news and the bad news. The good news is it looks like there are very few complaints arising out of hate incidents in this town. The bad news is there are more than three or six complaints. There are more than three or six incidents that happen. I'm sure of it, and I know most of you believe the same to be true. But when you think about someone whose rights have been violated, think about how easy or not that is to bring forward to someone. Think about what position they're in, what protected class they're in, where they come from, where their country of origin is, where it might have been absolutely um, unheard of to go to an official to complain about how you're being treated. So I don't believe that that is a true representation of what is really happening. That said, um, with regard to, his, to the proponent calling, there are no records of him calling the commission. He emailed our chair on October 24th. She emailed him back, and he attended our November meeting. We listened to his concerns. We formed a subcommittee. So for him to imply that we've done nothing is untrue. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yep. Yep. I'm Molly Flukiger from Precinct 4. Um, I have mixed feelings about uh, what we're discussing today in the article. I uh, recently resigned from the Disability Commission. And one of the reasons that I resigned from the Disability Commission was after a couple years, it was sort of unclear to the commission what it was supposed to do. And after trying to have that debate unsuccessfully, I decided to remove myself from that situation. Um, I think that's relevant here because we talked about, uh, a lot of folks have talked about ADA complaints. The way I understand it, if someone in the town has a complaint um, against the Americans with Disabilities Act, they're actually not necessarily supposed to go to the Human Rights Commission, but they're supposed to go to the town's ADA coordinator. Arlington, um, there's a man on staff, Mr. Jack Jones, who's Arlington's ADA coordinator. Um, Arlington... Uh, followed the, law, the ADA 25 years ago and wrote a grievance procedure that is supposed to handle this. Um, it's my understanding that in 25 years, we've had no complaints against the ADA in Arlington. So that again, is that good news? Or is that maybe a sign that the process isn't working properly? Um, I think the town doesn't do as much as it could to proactively promote the ADA. 
For example, some of you may not know that here in Town Hall, um, the Disability Commission has purchased assistive listening devices. So for those of you who have a hard time hearing, those resources are available, and I'm not sure that anybody really shares that information. Um, there are also things, I think, that with some of these meetings we have that do challenge people with physical disabilities in different ways, being able to read things, being able to stand, being able to sit, et cetera. So when I look at this um, article, I think of it uh, not as picking out the Human Rights Commission because maybe somebody didn't get what they wanted out of it, but maybe an opportunity to really look at an important issue, which is how we're handling our discrimination cases. And I imagine that if a committee of five people took a look at the Human Rights Commission, they also might think about what's happening on the Disability Commission and about ADA complaints. So I think I'm going to support this, and I encourage you to do that, too. Thank you. Mr. Dice. I move the question and all issues related there, too. Second. Okay, have you motion to terminate debate in all matters under the article? Um, all in favor, please say yes. Yes. All opposed, say no. No. In my opinion, it is a two-thirds vote. Debate is terminated. So once again, we're ready to vote, but we have before us, and we're going to vote it this way. First, we're going to vote on Mr. Harrington's substitute motion. If you want Mr. Harrington's substitute motion, please vote yes. If you're opposed to it, vote no. We're ready over there. All right, so the voting window is now open. Again, if you want Mr. Harrington, substitute vote yes. If you do not, vote no. Okay, voting window is now closed. We have 55 in the affirmative, 149 of the negative. Mr. Harrington's motion does not carry. We have now before us a recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen for no action. All in, we're going to do a voice vote. All in favor of no action, please say yes. Yes. All opposed, say no. No. We have a vote of no action on Article 9. And that closes Article 9, and we move to Article 10. Article 10 is before us. Uh, Bylaw amendment description of Mount Gilboa District Hill, District Crescent Hill District. Mr. Greeley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, this is just to uh, correct an error in the present historic uh, district bylaws, and it's to change the two addresses, 209 Lowell Street and 105 Westminster, to 207 Lowell Street uh, and 106 Westminster Avenue. Sir. Nope, him. Who's Mr. McCulka? Steve McCulka, um, uh, Precinct 9, also chair of the Historic District Commission. Just want to reiterate this is purely administrative change in comparing the town's new GIS maps to the warrant articles originally passed in 1991. We realize that the very long legal description of the district, which goes on for many, many pages, if you ever looked at the warrant article, actually refers to two properties that don't exist. Um, so this is <laughs> um, what I have up on the um, map shows the two um, lot lines that are being, the description is being changed just by changing the reference to the abutting properties. It doesn't move the lines at all. It doesn't change what properties are in the district or out of the district. It just fixes a transcription error that occurred many years ago and was lost somewhere in the 20 pages of text. Anybody else wish to discuss this article? Uh, Ms. Tyne, this is a majority vote? Yes. yes, okay. So this is a majority vote. All in favor, please say yes. Yes. Opposed, say no. It's a unanimous vote, and I so declare it. Unanimous. 427. And that closes Article 10, and that brings us to Article 11. Bylaw amendment, establish a community preservation committee. Okay. We have, this is the one with five. Ryan, okay. There you go. You have the floor, sir. Okay. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this uh, is to establish a committee uh, for the Community Preservation uh, Act, and uh, as voted by the uh, town of, uh, by the voters in the town of Arlington, and we're recommending the following. I know you have the vote in the selectmen's uh, report, but uh, we're recommending a nine-member uh, pursuant to general laws. Uh, a, a one member would be from the Conservation Commission, one from the Historical Commission, one from the Redevelopment Board, one from Park and Recreation Commission, and one from the Housing Authority. There would be four others at-large members, and what we are recommending is a, a screening committee uh, of the town manager and the chairman of the Board of Selectmen or designee, and then uh, that would be brought uh, those four candidates would be brought before the uh, entire Board of Selectmen for a vote uh, by the uh, Selectmen, uh, including also the Town Manager, the same way we, we do CDBG. Uh, the rest of it, duties, responsibility, administration, and operation, I won't uh, read through all of that for you, but we do feel this is the most transparent way to uh, elect these four at-large members uh, I really believe that this is going to take a lot of coordination. Uh, first of all, we are dealing with taxpayers' money uh, in this instance on the property tax and so also with coordination of all other towns and commissions. Uh, we feel this is the best way to go about this at this point in time. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, sir. Okay, so I'm going to introduce first the various people who have given me substitute motions. Mr. Harrington, Sean. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Sean Harrington, uh, Precinct 15. I'd actually like to amend the amendment that I am presenting. Amending your amendment. Yep. Um, instead of um, it saying member, I'd like to change it to at large member. Um, so the amendment would then read, no at-large member of the Community Preservation Committee shall serve more than six consecutive years at a time. Waiting period of three years shall be imposed on any member of the committee after serving six consecutive years if they wish to rejoin the committee. Second. Okay, it's been seconded. Um, the, originally, I was going to have it for all members, but after talking to town council, this seems to be the best way to go. Um, this is basically just to make sure that there's a consistent, um, I don't know if change would be the right word, but making sure that, it de that the committee doesn't become stale at all. Um, many times I've seen that people, you know, join boards and they get really excited after a while, but when they're there for such a long period of time, they end up kind of fading out. You know, the point of this committee is uh, community preservation, not self-preservation. Um, so. I think it basically speaks for itself. It gives them a chance to join the committee again, but they have to take a little bit of a break. Take a breather, allow someone else to come in with possibly new ideas. It doesn't mean you can't be part of the process. You can still show up to meetings. You can still be active with it. What it means though, is that we're, what this is going to do is try to get more people involved. This should be a community effort. It shouldn't just be for one group of people to run and stay forever. We should be trying to get a diverse group of opinions, um, people to serve in this over the course of time, and I think that's pretty much it. Okay, good, thank you. Mr. Hainer. Mr. Rar excuse me, Mr. Moderator, Bill Hainer, Precinct 2. Uh, I'm offering an amendment. Uh, I move the recommended vote of the Board of Selectmen be amended following respect in section 1A, 10th uh, line, after the word and delete from the word for, through and including the word section 1B and inserting. Two members appointed by the town moderator, one member of the, by the finance committee as, de as designated by such committee and one member appointed by the town manager. Mainly this is being more specific. Uh, it gives the uh, finance committee uh, a, a, at least one designated member. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Greeley said this is your money, our money. I think the Finance Committee does a phenomenal job and I think it's important for them to have a person there. I also think the town moderator has picked good people for different boards and things of that nature. 
Thank you. Thank you, sir. So that's Mr. Tainer. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Mr. Hainers is also before us. Mr. Carmen. Yep, you're next, John. John Deist. Dean Carmen, Precinct 20. So for most of you, except the people in the back, as I apologize, I had handed out two subs, two amendments. After, I mean, you're probably like I, I mean, I didn't expect four, three, four others to be sitting there. So I'm not going to um, put forward my two amendments. What I would like to do though is support Mr. Hainer's amendment and explain why, because I think his amendment is somewhat similar to mine. No, I'm not gonna put either forward, because I, I, I feel like I've created a bunch of litter, we've created a bunch of litter, killed a bunch of trees, and confused the matter. So, in supporting Mr. Hainer's amendment, I just wanna explain my, my reasoning. At all levels of government, whether it's the federal government. He can still speak. I, I thought speak he was going to article. present them. He has a right to speak as a town meeting member. I thought he was going to present them. So well, I'm just trying you to will get your I'm chance. Not... Do you want to speak? Go, Dean, go. Thank go. you. So, and I apologize for the confusion. Um, the, the reason I support Mr. Hainer's uh, amendment is it, you know, what we have here is really a separation of powers at all levels of government, whether it's the federal government, the state government, or the local government. Spending and appropriation is the job of the legislature. In Arlington, the job of the legislature falls to town meeting, all of us. And so when you look at our two other committees that we have right now that deal with financial matters, we have the Finance Committee. The appointing authority for the Finance Committee is not the Board of Selectmen. It is a three-person committee of the town moderator, the democratically elected speaker, the chair of the finance committee, and, and I always screw this one up, so let me go look at, thank you, trust fund chair of the trust fund commissioners. And I know when Mr. Greeley said it spent a lot of, you know, it was interesting, Mr. Greeley said we spent a lot of money, um, it, we were spending taxpayer money so the selectmen have to make the appointment. I don't think he was implying that the moderator of finance committee chair and trust fund commissioner don't make good decisions but I think it shows the difference in thought process. We also have a capital planning committee, and the capital planning committee has some set members on it. it you know, and after that, we have four citizen appointees, or we have two citizen appointees. I forget which one right now, let me look. Um, four registered voters of, of the town approved by, uh, appointed by the town moderator. Again, in the second situation, we don't ask the board of selectmen, we don't, add, we don't delegate our authority as town meeting members to the selectmen and say, hey, this is now a committee of the executive branch. We hold the power with the town moderator and we say, no, this is a committee of the legislature. And so that's why I'm supporting Mr. Hainer's motion instead of my own because I think it gets to the same place. It takes the power of appointment and it puts it in the hands of the democratically elected speaker of this body as well as the finance committee chair, which, and just for some clarifications, if you look at state law, the Finance Committee is a subcommittee of this town meeting. So you're taking the chair of a subcommittee of this body and you're asking the chair of the subcommittee to help with that appointment. So that's my, my thinking, my rationale. I apologize for any confusion that might have been started in the early going. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Warden. Thank you, Mr. Moderator uh, and fellow town meeting members. Um, well, I, uh, I, I'd like to move a, uh, an amendment to the selectman's recommendation, uh, which uh, is on your chairs. And, uh, but uh, if you look at it, and I'll, I don't know, do you have a copy? Mr. Yes, sir, we have one. You have one. Very yeah. Good. All right. <coughs> If you, uh, it's called uh, Arlington Town Meeting Amendment Article 11, and it's got today's date at the top. In the second last line, uh, there is a typographical error. Uh, the second last line, in paragraph three, uh, the spell check doesn't do context check very well. And um, so it says a term, uh, it's, well, it says uh, delete such and such words, and uh, it should say and insert 
uh, the, the, uh, s s some other words. Um, uh, so just so that I ask you to make that change administratively. Okay, so in, in number three, your uh, subparagraph three after the word terms the, in italics should be and? The, 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 in, the in should be and, yes. Okay. You got one letter right anyway. I see that. Um, so um, if I may have a second to my motion. Thank you. <clears throat> um, well, basically I don't have, neither do I have a, a, a problem with Mr. Hainer's amendment. I think <clears throat> either of them um, would um, do what this amendment attend, uh, tries to do to give your moderator the power to um, appoint some of the at-large members of this committee. Um, this is an important committee. I supported CPA. I worked for it. I wrote a letter in its favor. I gave them money, etc. cetera. Um, <clears throat> so I, I believe in this concept. The state law has established the outlines of the type of people you have to have on the committee, and they allow for four at-large members. <clears throat> My proposal was to <clears throat> divide the appointment of the four at-large members equally between the uh, board of selectmen and the manager on the one hand and the, mo and the moderator on the other hand. Um, the, the only problem I have with Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Hainer would uh, uh, slice the selectmen down by one more and put a member of the fin finance committee uh, on the uh, 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 fund, uh, on the preservation fund committee, which doesn't sound like a bad idea at all. <coughs> Um, but the, um, the, the, the problem I have with Mr. Hainer's amendment is the original uh, proposal of the, the selectmen uh, uh, provided for uh, staggered terms for the at-large people so they wouldn't all expire at once. Uh, so the first one would be appointed for one year, one for two years, and, or two for two years and one for three years or something like that. And, and I tried to maintain that structure. <coughs> um, and that seems to have been uh, seem, seems to have been eliminated. So it would mean that the, uh, um, the, the oh, am I running out of time? Yep, you're running out of time. I am. Okay, I, I would uh, I would ask you to support uh, my amendment to the board of selectmen's uh, recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have a second on Mr. Morden's um, motion? Okay. Um, Mr. Ruderman. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Michael Ruderman, Precinct 9. Um, I look at the portion of the uh, Selectman's uh, uh, recommended motion here that asks and, and um, expresses the desire for close uh, communication, cooperation, and integration of town needs with those members of, of the various boards who serve much, uh, much outside of the spotlight of, of uh, you know, th our thanks and gratitude at looking forward in years and trying to figure out now what it is we need to budget for, what we need to put into action, what we need to hold off until future years. These are the folks who, who toil uh, in the Finance Committee and uh, Capital Planning Committee. I would like to see the, uh, the expressed desire of the uh, selectmen's recommended motion um, ensured by making sure that um, a couple of these people have the, uh, both the metaphorical and the literal seats at the table that integration of purposes would require. Now I speak to you uh, in a similar vein as uh, our colleague Mr. Worden just did, uh, but from a different viewpoint. Uh, you probably know that I was not a supporter of Arlington's adoption of the Community, Community Preservation Act. Uh, a rather ardent one from the uh, number of hours that my beloved was wondering what I was trying to do to avoid talking to her through the entire debate. But I'm not here to recount uh, any funny stories about that. 
And what I'm saying is that I opposed Arlington's adoption of this for a number of reasons. One was that if I can trot out a line that summarizes uh, from the campaign why I was opposed, is that the Community Preservation Act works to the benefit and the legacy and the, and the, the, the glory and the reputation of the folks who, who get to propose new projects and uh, ultimately to cut the ribbons and welcome the public into something bright and shiny and new or old and restored, uh, something which is a clear and obvious benefit to the community. They get to cut the ribbons. There are some other folks in town here who work, who work very hard at putting budgets together. And sometimes they have to cut the budgets. I would like the folks who have to cut the budgets to have a seat at the table, literally a seat at the table, as well as the appointments uh, held by the people who cut ribbons. That's all, thank you. I support uh, Mr. Hainer's uh, uh, substitute. Um, Amendment. Thank you very much, sir. Ms. Stamps. Hi, Susan Stamps, Precinct 3. Um, I was involved in getting the ballot question passed. The, most of the cities and towns in the Commonwealth who have the Community Preservation Committee, um, the members are appointed by the Board of Selectmen. Let's not forget that we're only talking about four members of a nine-member committee. The other five members are required by statute. One has to be appointed by the Historical Commission, one by Parks and Rec, one by the Conservation Commission, one by the Redevelopment Board, and I knew I was gonna forget the fifth one, but. And, and then one by the Housing Authority. So you're talking about four people. Um, the Board of Selectmen operates in the most transparent manner of any board in town. Their, um, their meetings are covered by the advocate and all the local media, and they're, in fact, televised. I can't, except for town meeting, I really can't think of another board that is televised every week, and people watch the meetings. So um, to give the Board of Selectmen, together with the town manager... Oh, the school committee? I'm very, so I'm very sorry, Mr. Schlickman. <laughs> My apologies. Um, all right, well, okay, maybe there are three boards, but that's, you know, that are televised. Um, but um, the process is very transparent, and the, um, the purview of the Board of Selectmen is to think about the needs of the town as a whole, and it seems that, uh, to me, that their um, proposed motion in their Selectmen's report does make the most sense, and we are hoping that that's the way it goes. If you do read the their proposed, um, their proposed vote, you'll see that um, in a couple of places it requires, doesn't recommend, but requires consultation with the Finance Committee. The, everybody thinks the Finance Committee needs to be involved in these discussions. And don't forget that the role of the Community Preservation Committee is simply to vet projects that are brought forward by whoever wants to bring them forward, and then um, ultimately the projects are voted on at the following Springstown meeting and the money voted at that point. So at that, it will be ultimately the decision of town meeting. And with all due respect to the town moderator, I don't think he needs to be involved in the process before that. Thank you. Mr. Leonard. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. John Leonard, Precinct 17. I, I feel like I have to speak my mind on this, especially after listening to some of the comments earlier this evening. 
As most of us know, and most of us have heard so far, out of these nine members on this committee, five of them are automatically taken away from us. They're appointed, they're situated, whatever, so we only have four. Now, according to the details of the law of the Community Preservation Act, it states the four remaining positions can be elected or appointed positions at the discretion of the community. Now, not to go down old roads, but back in 2011, certain people in the town wanted to appoint a position in the clerk's office. And the town of Arlington rose up and said, no, we want to elect. In 2013, certain people in the town wanted to elect the treasurer's position, a point, excuse me, I, I'll change that. In the town of Arlington again rose up and said, no, we want to elect. I would ask town meeting members to remember that what they're hearing tonight and what they're hearing with all these amendments, do not let your elected power disappear. There are many, many capable people in the town of Arlington that either would want the position, desire the position, or have the knowledge to do a good job in the position. I just cannot believe what I've heard this evening about Let's appoint this, let's appoint that, let's have this committee appoint, 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 where it's actually stated again, like I said, in the law, at the discretion of the committee, at the discretion of the community, they can also be elected. Again, five positions of the nine are already spoken. The com community has been given the right to have the other four positions filled by electing. And all we're talking about here tonight is let's give the power of appointing to certain people. I thought we learned our lesson in the past couple of years. I would appreciate and I would ask that we don't lose sight of the fact that there's nothing in the details of the law that states anybody, unless I'm totally mis misunderstanding this, has to go up in front of the Board of Selectmen or any other board for approval. It says to me by this law, somehow these four remaining people should be elected, possibly on their merits or their knowledge, but they should not have to be subject to approval by any board. I would ask the town meeting members to remember we got in trouble with appointment before. The town of Arlington said we want to elect. Don't take that away from us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Deist. John Dice, Precinct 13, and a member of the Finance Committee. Uh, my opinion about the Community Preservation Act is it can enormously benefit the town if it is, if it is managed in the right way. And by the right way, what I mean is what we're talking about primarily in the Community Preservation Act is money that can be used for capital projects, primarily. At least in my opinion, that's the sort of primary positive thing that can happen. And what I don't understand, having seen Dean Carman's uh, uh, article, amendment, is that he had in his amendment appointing uh, 
Uh, let me read it to you. Appointed yeah, by his, an Mr. appointed Dice, committee. John Dean's on, Dean withdrew his. I understand. Yeah. But uh, th that's what I find frustrating because uh, he had the moderator, the chair of the finance committee, and the chair of the capital planning committee as the three appointing members. I think it is really important having watched the Capital Planning Committee for all of these years do the superb job that it does, that, the, that, that, that combination of three people would be the right combination in, in order to appoint uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, the four uh, remaining uh, seats available on the committee. So I, I don't understand, you know, maybe I should ask you if you, you could kindly ask Dean why he uh, decided that uh, Mr. Hainer's amendment uh, is, is preferable. Uh, I, I, I haven't had a chance to speak to him this evening about it, but maybe you could ask him that because I happen to think that his amendment is the best one available, although I like Mr. Hainer's as well. However, I think the, the having the chair of the Capital Planning Committee as a member uh, is important. So maybe if, if I could ask that Dean comment, uh, I could be educated. Mr. Com Com Carmen, do you wish to uh, elucidate us on why you changed your mind? Dean Carmen, Precinct 20. Um, well, two things. I wish I could take credit for a well-worded amendment, but I actually just stole the Finance Committee appointing authority and substituted one person. So, um, no, I mean, John, I was sitting at my chair, there were five amendments, and I, I mean, I wrote two of them. I was confused and thought I was going to vomit. I was so confused. So I, um, I figured the discretion is the better part of valor, and I just withdrew my two. So, so um, Mr. Moderator, uh, is there no chance now for, uh, for us to have an amendment by which the, the chair of the Capital Planning Committee might be a member of this appointing committee? You can make any substitute motion you want. Uh, You'd have to uh, do then, it now then, and have it in then, our then, hands. Then I, I would like to submit, uh, maybe with my name attached to it, uh, Dean Carmen's, uh, uh, <laughs> D D Dean Carmen's uh, uh, amendment. Wait a second. Mr. Wait a second. Doug has a question. Which one? He has two. Uh, it, it is. Well, wait a second. Maybe he's going to make his motion. Then we're going to adjourn till next month, next Wednesday, because it's three seconds to eleven. Which one, Mr. Dice? It, it, it is the one that uh, that uh, states appointed by an appointing committee of three members, composed of the moderator, the chair of the finance committee and the chair of the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, appointed by the joint. Okay, this one here. You want to take Mr. Carmen's, take his name away, put your name there, and submit this as a motion. Yeah. Yes. All right. Does everybody understand what Mr. Deist is doing? Yes. Okay. Mr. Deist, you'll come up here afterwards and sign the appropriate paperwork. Uh, thank, motion thank to adjourn. Thank you. Do we have any much. motions for reconsideration? Now, for the new members, we can reconsider, but only if you tell me about it tonight. If no one reconsiders anything, you can't ever talk about it again. Any motions for reconsideration? None. We are adjourned till Wednesday, 8 o'clock. Please be ready to go at 8 o'clock. Everybody was filing in at 5, 10 past. Um, I'm going to start right at 8 o'clock.